Well, I'm not disappointed because, you know, things happen and things that you can't you control what you can control. And I can't control that. But um, as far as the MVP race, I think, I, um, you know, show what I'm capable of doing, um, um, you know, not only individually, but from a team's perspective, us being number one in the West. Um, there was a lot of conversation about, you know, LeBron can do those things in the East, but if he ever came to the West, what can he do? You know, uh, so, you know, I heard all of that. And uh, to be able to, to, to have our team at, at the top of the Western Conference and, and playing the way that we were playing at that time and the way I was playing, um, you know, that's, a, that's definitely a good feeling. Perk, you're up first. Who should win MVP? LeBron James. Listen, when you talk about the body of work that LeBron has put in this season, it's been remarkable. Forget that he's 35 years old. Forget that it's year th uh, 17. He has been a beast, and he was climbing up the chart, and he was on Giannis heels like a pair of socks. And when I'm thinking of the MVP, I'm thinking of the most valuable player to your team, right? When I look at Giannis, Giannis is ha having a hell of a season, but he's the MDP, the most dominant player, right? Because he's dominating in every statistical category. But if I take Giannis off the Milwaukee Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks are still a mediocre team. They're still going to be a five, six, seven, eight seed in the East. If I take LeBron James away from the Los Angeles Lakers, I don't know where they will be at because I do know this. First of all, the Lakers haven't made the playoffs since 2013. That was seven years ago. Second of all, when LeBron James is off the court, the Lakers rank 28 offensively. When he's on the court, they rank second. That's a huge drop off. So that shows the value that LeBron James brings to his ball club. And then on top of that, this is his first 2010 season. How crazy does that sound? This is his first year averaging 20 and 10. And then during the pandemic, for me to hear one of his coworkers, one of his opponents, Damian Lillard, do an interview and they asked him, who is, your, who is this year's MVP? for you and he said LeBron James that was enough for me because Dame Dollar didn't even have to answer that question but he did and he said one reason why is because LeBron James is in a tough Western Conference and he's doing it at an extremely high level so Max you could have the floor with all your stats and all your Wilt Chamberlain numbers about Giannis or whatever the case may be that's all right with me but I'm sticking with LeBron James. Well, first of all, if you took Giannis off the Bucks and replaced him with another forward or took LeBron off the Lakers and replaced him with another point guard, it has to be a guy who can actually play, they're both probably going to make the playoffs in their conference. The reason the Lakers' um, uh, success offensively changes so drastically without LeBron is, one, because LeBron is absurdly great, no question, and two, because they don't really have another point guard that can run that offense at a playoff level, let's be honest. It's, the way the, the, it's just the way it is. Um, now, let's get down to really what this is about. First of all, let me take your argument. What would LeBron's argument? What would LeBron do in the West? LeBron, you're number one in the Western Conference regular season in a conference that the Warriors don't play in anymore, really. KD and Clay are both off the Warriors this year, and Steph missed time. What are you talking about? If the unbeatable Warriors, the one LeBron was lucky to get a single win in the last against the last time he played them in the finals, were still at full strength, the Lakers clearly wouldn't be number one in the West. But at any rate, let, let's even put that aside. The, the word play about most dominant, best, most valuable, it's all nonsense. It all means the same thing. Best is defined as who's the best for their team. Best is the, who, when you take it all, it all away, who gets you closest to a win? The answer is Giannis. Forget about the fact that he's averaging almost 30, 14, and 6 with a steal and a block efficient points. That he's leading the league in PER, player efficiency rating, again on offense. And that he's better than LeBron defensively. Forget about all that stuff. LeBron gets extra credit for being this kind of point guard glue guy who's brought them all along. And he deserves credit for that. But guys, let's look at this soberly. Any team ever with two top five players on it is always a powerhouse. You can't find me a single example where those are two top five players in the league that year, and they're not a powerhouse. So the Lakers are a powerhouse. If you put LeBron so, and AD together, you're going to have a powerhouse team. 
Now, does LeBron deserve more so, credit than AD for that? Arguably, he has the ball in his hand. He's deciding the offense. I agree about his wisdom and his championship pedigree. That helps them. But, but LeBron and AD are neck and neck this year for best player on the Lakers. The, the freak on that, like Middleton's an all-star uh, player uh, this year, Max. caliber. There's no AD on that team. Ma Max. Uh Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.